you hello 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 welcome bless you good to see you happy sunday happy sunday happy sunday happy sunday greet me as you come on hello happy to see you happy to see you happy to see you come on in hello everybody Greet me as you come on. God bless you. Good to see you. Thank you so much for the greetings. This is Carolyn. God bless you as well. Good to see you. Greetings to you, Dr. Nixon. Good to see the Undaunted family tonight. Praise God. What a blessing. What a blessing. What a blessing. What a blessing. I trust that all is well with you, the Lord's people. Greet each other in brotherly love as you come in. As you come in, if you haven't anointed yourself today with oil, go ahead and get your oil out. I trust that you are having an amazing day. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As you come in, if you have any awesome news or testimonies that you want to share with me, go ahead and do so before we get started. Amen. If you have any awesome news to share, any t glorious testimonies to share, go ahead and please share that as you get start as we get started. You can greet us. We're giving a praise to the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Greetings, saints. If you want to go ahead and share on your um, pages, go ahead and do that, please. Praise God. As we get started, go ahead and get started by sharing, 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 sharing. Good evening. Amazing, wonderful, phenomenal, God-fearing people. Praise the Lord. I want to greet you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. It is time to pray, y'all. It's time to acknowledge the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Greetings to you, the Lord's people. Hallelujah. Go ahead and share with a friend. Share, share, share. Good evening, Pastor Nixon. Gracious God in heaven, we're glad that Pastor Nixon is on the air tonight. He's on with us tonight. Blessings to you, man of God owner co-owner with his wife dr sylvia nixon of press and soul leaders of the well prayer ministry we clapping it up for them for all of the men and women of god who are joining us on tonight i celebrate you glory be to the most high god i celebrate you vicky wells representing gainesville florida praise the lord woman of god blessings to you and your family on tonight my cousin cousin is in the room cousin is in the room good evening um miss sherry sherry schumann fuller your dad is so funny i love him he is something else i love god for blessing me with such a uh a, a funny and loving uncle that i have Amen. Blessings to you, the Lord's people. Glory and honor, victory. Come in the room with a praise on your lips. I'm Natasha Davis. Welcome to the broadcast tonight. Um, I'm your host and your teacher this evening. Praise the Lord. Share the broadcast with somebody and let them know their blessing is on the air right now. And if you from the country, if you from the ghetto, if you from 21st and Phoenix, praise God. If you from uh, um, the Swats and you from South at Southwest Atlanta, tell them rat, R-A-T, tell them rat now that their blessing is um, <laughs> on the air. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. 
Hallelujah. Greetings in the Bahamas. Greetings in the United Nations. Greetings in West Africa. Greetings to you that are joining us all around the world. We declare that Jesus is Lord um, in the United States and surrounding nations. Hallelujah. We give God the glory tonight. We give God the honor. We give God the praise. Why don't you celebrate God by putting a praise on the screen tonight? Hallelujah. You got so much to be thankful for. You got so much to be thankful for. You in your right mind. Hallelujah. You got so much to be thankful for. So much to be thankful for. If you are watching this broadcast tonight, you got so much to be thankful for. You got eyes to see. You got hands that work. Hallelujah. You got a mouth that works. And if you're in the hospital with somebody, uh, we thank God for you that are able to be a life source to that person that is in need of healing, of breakthrough and abundance. You're in the right place at the right time. Thank you for allowing God to use you as a conduit. Thank you for allowing God uh, 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 to be, uh, 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 be an extension of the Lord's hands, his voice, hallelujah, his hands, his eyes, his feet. Hallelujah. We thank God tonight. Um, if you're watching this video via uh, YouTube by replay, we thank the Lord for you watching via replay. We thank God for you coming in agreement, um, allowing God to minister to you via uh, a YouTube. Praise the Lord. Um, if you haven't already, go ahead and press the notification button so that you can know every time this broadcast is on the air. Um, go ahead and like and follow the broadcast if you haven't already. I want to encourage you to go ahead and do that um, while you are sharing, while you are in that place of giving God glory. Hallelujah. Uh, Carolyn Reed says he's a way maker. Dr. Nixon says, so much to be thankful for. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Why don't you just go ahead and continue to put a praise on this screen? Glory to God. Welcome, 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 welcome. Um, if you don't know by now, you can access me on all social media outlets by going to natashadavis.org. You can go to natashadavis.org. Anything that is going on in the ministry, you'll be able to find it there. Uh, you'll be able to uh, find my new book, The Enemies of Progress. You'll be able to uh, subscribe to my blog page. Amen. Praise the Lord. You will be able to shop in our store. Um, this is the newsletter for this month. So if you didn't subscribe, you didn't get a newsletter with all of the important information um, that is for October. So uh, go ahead and subscribe so you can get next month's newsletter and you can learn and find out more about what we are doing to be an asset, to be um, hands in the kingdom of God. Uh, you can go ahead and shop for this apparel that we that we have. Um, the Listen, Pay Attention apparel is available. The Mob apparel is available. Praise the Lord. Um, you can get them in gray. You can get it in um, black. Uh, but most of all, you can get it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And what does MMOB stand for? It stands for Minding My Own Business. It's a, it's, it is a society for the undistracted. And what is a distraction? A distraction is a matter that don't require my attention. We're not going to put our valuable attention on any and everything, but we're going to live a focused life and we are going to have discipline in what we do for the Lord. Hallelujah. If you didn't already um, have your anointing oil, go ahead and put your anointing oil um, and anoint yourself with oil. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Declare Jesus as Lord of my life. I walk in anointing. I walk in victory. I walk in presence. Hallelujah. I walk in breakthrough. Yes, God. Yes, I walk in wealth. I walk in abundance. I walk in revelation. Why? Because that's what I'm yoked with. I'm in partnership with. I wear the armor of the Most High God. I wear victory. I wear healing. Why? 
because healing is a characteristic in the king a characteristic in the kingdom of God and that's who I am hallelujah it is a part of my assignment I just don't receive healing but it is my assignment to walk as a demonstrator of the healing virtue of God so wherever I show up shifts happen wherever I show up shifts change um, nations change change my atmosphere shifts hallelujah why because i am an ambassador of the lord my god hallelujah i thank i thank god yes he is a keeper he is a keeper glory to the living god i pray for you the lord's people i want you to prepare yourself tonight and make ready to receive the word of god and i want you to make ready for us to pray it is october we have moved uh, quickly ahead into this next place um, um, in our uh, calendar. Uh, I have been saying to you, if you have been watching, uh, if if you have been watching, I have been saying um, that uh, uh, Rosh Hashanah, the new year, is with us. The new year is among us. It's already already rolling. Our new year is already in place. And so I've come to you to be able to share uh, um, a, a place where we are in this new year, how to get this new year started, how to walk in the plans and purpose of God, how to address things that might have been a barrier uh, to get on the same page where you hear deliberate, distinct, and clear instructions from the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so if you have questions that you did not get a chance to answer on last week, I want you to go ahead and get those questions ready. Get your questions ready because we have been talking about last week. We started talking about the center of fasting last week. We started talking about the center of fasting last week. We are going to go on a fast. Those of you who will, those of you who can Join me on a seven-day fast, October the 25th through October the 31st. If you can join me on that corporate fast, we will be coming together praying from seven at 7 o'clock Monday. I'm sorry, Sunday through uh, Saturday. We will fast and pray for seven days. The information and the requirements are going to be posted on natashadavis.org no later then October the 18th. So I want you to go ahead and subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Um, my blog posts are there. The notes from the, the broadcast is available there. And so we want to uh, be in a place where we receive from God. We want to be in a place where we receive um, instruction from the Lord. We want to be in a place where we receive instruction from the Lord. We want to be in a place where we receive instruction from the Lord. All right. All right. So, um, 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 get your Bibles out, get a pen and a journal, get a piece of paper. Um, you never know when you're going to have a, 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 a quiz on this channel. So take notes, take notes, take notes, take notes. And as you take notes, um, 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 it is going to bless your life. One of my assignments in the kingdom of God is to uh, be effective by teaching and instructing and by giving the word of the Lord uh, and by uh, 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 being, being in a place to where I say to you those things that are, are encouraging, inspiring, those things that empower you. Um, so please um, get ready because... Those of you who listen and pay attention, God is really going to bless you. There were some great questions that came across on last week. And so um, um, put your prayer requests up on the screens. God bless you, Sister Melanie. Glad to have you again in the in the in the in the in the class on tonight. Um, um, she posed a great question on last week and, 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 uh, sister lovey Hunter, she posed a great question last night, uh, last week on, uh, it was Thursday actually, on uh, on the forum. So in the comments, if you have a question, if you have a question, if you have a question, please put it in the comments. 
you have a prayer request, please put it in the comments. And as we pray tonight, God, we bring our hearts in, in. we bring our minds in. If you're in front of the TV, if you're in, in, in a group with a lot of people talking, uh, if you are in any place where you could be distracted, I'm going to ask that you please remove yourselves. Go in the kitchen. Go in the bathroom, go in the bedroom, step outside, sit on the porch, sit on the back um, deck, wherever you need to get a moment. Sit in the car, wherever you need a moment. Um, I'm asking you to please make yourself available to the Lord and pay close attention. Pay close attention attention. I want to thank you so very much for those of you that continuously support the broadcast, those of you that continuously log in with me every week, Thursdays at 7 o'clock, Sundays at 6.30. Thank you, thank you, thank you for, for, for joining in. And um, as we come uh, together in agreement, um, I am praying for you. I, I am seeking the face of the Lord. My heart is open. My ears are open to what the spirit of the Lord is saying to each of you. So I want to say thank you um, and a big hug and a heart to every person that are faithful to come and join me as we march forward in this season um, seeking the Lord. Our scripture text um, came to us last week from the book of Joel. Um, um, I talked to you about uh, fasting, the center of fasting. Um, I actually read for you Joel 1 and 14 that speaks to the time of fast fasting, the time of fasting. Um, I want you to listen to me very carefully and pay close attention to the language being spoken to you. The time. There is a set time of breakthrough. There is a set time of favor. There is a set time of empowerment. There is a set time for the miracles of God. There is a set time for your advancement. There is a set time for you to make history in the spirit realm. There is a set time. And so Ecclesiastics talk to you about to everything there is a time. To everything is there is a time, and um and so if you uh want to get brought up to speed, uh, we want to respect the time that we have. So that was like a brief uh recap uh, of of last week, and so very quickly I want to talk to you and give you like a a brief. A recap that came to you uh, from Joel chapter 1 verse 14 in the New uh, Living Translation. The Bible reads, announce a time of fasting. Did you hear that? Announce the time of fasting. You wouldn't be on this broadcast with me at this moment except there was an announcement that the, that the broadcast was going to take place. Some of you strolled and you saw me live and you stopped. But most of you, the majority of you, you know because an announcement, uh -huh, you will not, you will not um, grab a hold to your appointment until you understand uh, um, that an announcement is coming hold to you, uh, coming across to you of when your set time is or what God is doing. You want to know what he's doing it, but more importantly, you want to know when he is doing it. So for those of you who want to know, I want to know what the Lord is doing. I want to know what the Lord is doing. If you want to know what the Lord is doing, you got to know what the Lord is doing right now. You got to know what God is doing when he said he is doing it. You don't know what, you know, you know, we know what God said, but what is he saying to you right now? Now, you have a prophecy over your head. What is your instruction? You got a prophecy over your head. What is God calling you to do to fulfill the prophecy in this season? Children of God, God is so uh, 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 careful to fulfill his word in your life. And you got to be uh, um, very on top and clear and uh, on top and clear about seeking the Lord for um, the appointment with God. So the Bible says in the book of Joel, chapter one, verse 14, in the New Living Translation, the Bible says this, announce a time of fasting. Uh-huh. Call the people together for a solemn meeting. 
bring who? The leaders and all the people in the land into the temple of the Lord our God and cry out to him where? There. This scripture gives us a clear indication that God is specific on the time and he is specific on the place. He's specific on the time and he's specific on the place. If you are walking around in your life out of syncopation, out of orchestration of what God wants to do when and when when he wants to do it and where he wants to do it, my friends, I invite you during this time for you to get in alignment and that you would uh, 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 get to a place to where you are divinely in orchestration with what the Lord is saying and what he is doing. And you can't do that except you get on the same page with God through his time of calling you near, through his time of having uh, a, 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 a specified instructions like like with like the word that was given to the children of Israel in the book of Joel. Last week, we talked about doing this solemn time of fasting. There were some do's and don'ts. There were some people that asked the question, very straightforward question. What are the do's and the don'ts of fasting? What is God doing in this season? God bless you, um, Bishop Carrington. That's my brother in Baltimore. Good to have you on. My love to Lady Al on tonight. Chapter 6 of Matthew. Take notes. Matthew chapter 6 talks about a fast that is pleasing to the Lord. I can't go into it, but Matthew talk, chapter 6 talking to, talks to you about how you are not to be announcing to the world that you are fasting. You are not to be bragging. You are not to be... Uh, 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 saying to people and, and talking to people in a way like, oh my God, I'm so faint. Oh my God, this fast is just so, that is not the behavior that you are to go in while you are fasting. Read about it. I cannot go stop right now to explain that because we did last week, look at last week's broadcast or Thursday night's broadcast. Isaiah chapter 58 talks about a fast that is pleasing to the Lord. That's Matthew 6. The whole chapter talks about it. And that's Matthew uh, Matthew chapter 6 and Isaiah 58. So big man, so big woman, mature Christian, baby Christian, Christians who have never fasted, believers who have never fasted, fasted, uh, or have fasted. Uh, so you just, you know, I know how to fast. Okay, you know how to fast. In this time, though, you cannot walk in a sin of presumption. You cannot presume that you uh, are in the same place that you've always been, beloved. You cannot make that presumption. But all scripture is given by God for, for inspiration and instruction. And so if you're at a place to where you humble yourself and hear the word of the Lord, I guarantee you God will say something to you that you've never heard before. You know why? Because you're not in a season that you've ever been in before. You're not the same age that you've been in. You, you're, in a, you're a different age. You've never been through this level of a pandemic. You haven't been through uh, the certain crisis. You haven't experienced before where we are in our lives. So I would advise you uh, to, 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 to seek the Lord with a fresh face if these scriptures seem, uh, um, if they seem to be familiar. Mark 11 and 25 talks about the posture of prayer. He said, when you come to pray, he said, forgive. So for those of you who are saying that, 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 that your prayers are going unanswered or there are some things that you are yet to hear from, or it seems like you are far from the Lord. Well, beloved, I want to invite you on a quest to possibly go in this place where you seek God um, and, and, and that you discover if you have justified in your mind why you don't talk to people, if you have justified in your mind uh, um, um, certain things that is not pleasing to God, 
I'm not saying you let people manipulate you because I'm not letting folks manipulate me um, and give me excuse to why I need to have room for people who are in my life wasting my time, people who are in my life wasting uh, 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 my valuable information, my, the people. I can't get my time back. If I loaned you money, if you owe me money, whatever the case may be, uh, whatever, whatever that is materially, I squashed it, but you know what? I can't get my time back. So what I'm not going to allow you to do is to waste my time. I'm not going to allow you to waste my time. And so my time is God's time and God's time is very, very valuable to the degree that he says, this is what I want to do in this time slot right here. Um, one of the things, one of the most valuable things that my spiritual mom could have ever said to me when I was going through a hardship in my life, it was right before I moved to Atlanta. I mean, nothing was going well. I mean, no doors were being opened and I thought that I was in sin. I thought that I had offended the Lord and some wisdom that my spiritual mom gave me. She said, oh no, baby. She said, the Lord love you too much to let you continue in sin. It's a scripture. The word of the Lord says, uh, 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 it's the goodness of the Lord that will cause a man to repent. If you're in a place to where you want to be sensitive, not to offend God, she was talking to me in that vein because she knows I'm a praying woman. She knows that I'm a woman that seek to be in the will of God. She knows that I'm the woman of God that I really, if I, if I need to get right with God, I want to get right with God. I don't want to be out here doing my own thing. And so there are some things and some people, I want to make a distinction. There are some people that need to be on the outskirts of your life. There are some people that don't need to be in the inner course of your life because they are dedicated to wasting your time. And beloved, the hour is too far spent for you to have people in your life wasting your time. As one of the things that you're going to have to be accountable to and give account to the Lord for is what you did with your time. If you don't have this incredible, phenomenal, life-changing book that I wrote called The Enemies of Time, there is a chapter in this book that speaks to um, your existence of time, the progress of your existence. While you were on this thing called earth, what did you do with your time? What did you do with your talents? What did you do with your treasure? And so you can say, I spent my time being afraid. You can, the Lord might say to you, you spent your time running. You spent your time being distracted. I suggest that you get one of these hoodies that will help you have a lifestyle of living of life being undisturbed. I would suggest that you go to natashadavis.org tonight and order your hoodie that will help you cultivate a lifestyle of being undistracted. Why? Because it is a time, it is a time that you're going to have to stand before God. You know what? In this thing called time, the Bible says that it is appointed once for man to die and after that there is the judgment. Oh God, y'all got me worked up tonight, my Lord. And so I'm going to bring you now into the second session, into the second session. Ready? Put your seatbelts on. Let's go. And so in this second session, and so as we um, purpose, we are what? In this fast, we are purposing to prepare. Um, so these weeks now ahead, we are purposing to prepare. We are purposing to prepare uh, you for what God desires to perform in your life. Uh-huh. You are being purposed. You are being postured to prepare what, what God is about to do in your life. Um, you don't just, you don't just listen, listen. You don't just walk in surgery. Uh-huh. Without preparation. When you are due to have surgery, what, what, what they do before you are scheduled for sur surgery, they tell you don't eat nothing after 10 o'clock. They tell you, uh, come to this surgery fasting. They, 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 they put a bonnet on your head. No matter, no, they, they prepare you. They tell you, um, um, of some things that they need you to do. You need to have somebody here to take you home. Uh, if you have ever had an inpatient or outpatient surgery or whatever the case may be, when they prepare you 
before surgery, you put on a hospital gown, uh, um, they assign you to a room, they ask you a series of questions, they ask you if you're allergic to anesthesiology, have you ever had any negative uh, uh, effects to any medication? Listen, they go in depth about this place that you're a, that is a serious place that you are about to embark on. So what am I here to do? I'm here to be your scrub nurse. My God, my I thank you, Lord, for such an honor. I'm here to be your scrub. I'm here to be your prep nurse. I'm here to be the person that let you know before you go on this fast, there is a place and there is a set of instructions that you need. And so you just don't bust up in a, in, in a surgical center. You don't just bust up. Uh, there are some things that they, that they do. And so, and so, and so, um, when you come into these places, you often come fasting when there's a serious, uh, thing before you have your metabolic panel, before they put you, uh, in a place to where they, 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 they do a diagnosis of what's going on in your blood. They say, come fasting. Yes, God. So when you come to this place of fasting, I want you to understand that this is the place. This is a surgical center. This is the place where I got this green light right here. Amen. Praise God. But in this surgical place, this is where the light of heaven illuminates and, 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 and seeks out what is going on in your heart. This is the place I talked to you about it last week. The diagram is going to give you last week's message, but I put it up here so that you can have a recap and an understanding of where we are in the center of fasting. Listening? Are you listening? Are you listening? Pay attention. And so, and so in this time of fasting, what fasting does is, is that, is, is that, is that God begins to examine the heart. Yes, my God. God. Yes. Yes. It's not about the food. It's about what's going on in your heart. It's not about, uh, uh, you being in a place of suffering just to be suffering, but this is a, this is a consecrated place. Davis, don't get ahead of yourself. Praise God. Let God lead you. Hallelujah. Uh, so, so, so God is examining your heart. You better listen to me. Don't you just get up here on this examination table. Mm. Don't you just get up here on this examination table and, and expect for this to be any other visit as usual. This is not every other visit as usual. This is a time of, uh, 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 of life changing moments. This is a time of consecration. You better listen to me. David said in Psalm 26, Somebody please be studious enough to put it up on the screen. Listen to me, surrounding nations. West Africa, listen to me. Listen to me in, 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 in the Bahamas. Listen, listen. Uh, um, uh, those of you who are watching me from Australia, you better listen to me. God is speaking to his people. And through his servant, David, David says in Psalms 26, verse 2, the Bible says, David wrote, Test me, O Lord, and try me. Some of your Bibles, depending on what translation it is, David said, try the reins of my heart. Uh, he said, I'm a, this is a deliberate place and I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming specifically for you to examine what is going on inside of my heart. He said, test me, O Lord. And try me, he said, examine my heart. This is the first bullet point I want you to, if you're making notes, write this down. If you're making notes, write this down. Fasting is an alignment of the heart. Fasting is an alignment of the heart, which, which comes through our behavior. You know, you want to you wanna know why you're doing what you do? Examine your heart and you can become so used to, um, what's going on in your behavior to where you don't really even understand that your heart is out of alignment. Why are you obedient? Because your heart is in alignment. Why are you disobedient? Because your heart is out of alignment. And so fasting will 
will cause you to get an alignment with God. Because why? God is going to test. He's going to try. He's going to, uh, 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 he is going to, um, use, uh, the candle. The Bible says that his word is the candle. Um, his spirit is the candle of man. He's going to come and examine you. Yes, God, he's going to come and examine you. And so as you prepare to, to fast, you got to understand he's not coming to criticize you because this is somebody who love you. He's not coming to condemn you because this is somebody who, who cares about you. Listen to me. This is somebody who desires the greatness and the great things for your life. This is somebody who wants you to advance. This is somebody who wants you to prosper. Listen, this is somebody who is interested in having relationship with you. So this is the opportunity where you're saying to God, this is me drawing not to you and I'm opening up to you so that you can examine my heart. And so um, another thing that I want you to write down in your notes, I said to you, I said to you, the first bullet was fasting is an alignment of the heart. Uh, fasting is also a fe featured presentation. You ready? Let's go. Um, good evening, uh, niece, um, Xavier. Good to see you on tonight. You ready? Listen, listen, share with your friends, share with your friends. Fasting is a featured presentation. Um, it's a spotlight. It is a highlight. Um, it is, it is, it is, it is something that, that God uses to call, uh, attention to. Um, it's a, it's a presentation. So everything that's going on in your heart, everything that's going on in your life, um, this is a featured presentation. And so I really want to spend a moment in time with you right here, really allowing you to understand what I mean by a featured presentation. You listening? Get your um, Bibles and your pens and your piece of paper and I want you to take a note to Joel, um, chapter number two, mm -hmm. Joel number two, Joel number two. Yes, God. I want to recall to it for you before I read Joel two, that Joel one and 14 says, announce the time of fasting, call the people, uh-huh. Call the people together for a solemn meeting, a solemn meeting. Bring the leaders and the people of the land into the temple of the Lord. Uh -huh. A specified place, specified time to the Lord our God and cry out to him there. Picks it up here in Joel 2 verses 12 uh, uh, through 17. But I'll read to you the first couple of scriptures, our first couple of verses. Joel 2 and 12 says, um, um, that is why the Lord says, turn to me when? Now. Turn to me now while there is what? Time. Turn to me now while there is time and give me your hearts. He didn't say at this time, give me your money. At this time, he didn't say, give me an offering. At this time, he, he didn't say, uh, uh, go feed the homeless. He said, he said, turn to me. And he said, give me your hearts and come to me with fasting and with weeping and with mourning. You better listen to me. Verse 13 says this, don't tear your clothing in your grief. I want you to tear your hearts instead. And return to the Lord your God, for he is merciful and compassionate. And so what do you mean? What does the word of the Lord mean by that? I want you to take the two. I want you to take Joel 1 and 14 and meditate. I want you to take Joel 2, 12 and 13 and meditate. The Bible says, announce the time of fasting and call the people to a solemn assembly. 
this word that God and this two these two uh, different verses of scripture, the 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 meaning behind this is is to sanctify, to sanctify, to to consecrate. We don't use that word anymore. To sanctify, to consecrate. Um, to be set aside, my God, I feel the anointing going to bless and move in the hearts of his people tonight. To sanctify, to consecrate, to set aside for a specific use and a reason. To designate, uh huh. that's an old school term in the church that we don't use anymore. When you are designate, that means there is an appointment given to you that is specified. So, so a designated place, a designated time, and a designated use um, called by God for his people. Now listen, so that I can help you, this is a solemn time that is not to be like every other time. This is a specified time that's not to be like all your other times of prayer. This is an intimate appointment with God. And what I thought about today was I thought about um, when um, we talk about consecration. Remember, con time of consecration. This is time to sanctify. This is a time to consecrate. Listen, pay attention. So what I thought about today as I was praying, I thought about this time of my consecration. During this time of my consecration, I was affirmed. This was a consecration and this was a affirmation um, in an apostolic environment that I was affirmed and set aside to the Lord. And, and it was exemplified before God that God had consecrated me and that he has set me aside as his prophet. There was an assembly that took place. I said there was an assembly that take place. As you pay attention to this picture, you see people crying. You see the bishops in their attire. You see the pastors and the elders that came forward. This was a solemn assembly. This was an assembly that was not like any other service. This was an assembly that was set aside for a specific and a designated time with God. My God, I wonder if I have some people. This was a time where God put a, a, a specific thing around my neck. And if you see my hand there, there's a, there is a, there is an apostle's ring and a bishop's ring on my finger. This was an assort. This was an anointed time. This was a consecrated assembly before the Lord. And the Lord said, daughter, 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 you you have been you have been set aside this is a consecrated space there is a knife going into your life and into your heart as you've never experienced this is an attire this is this is this is this is a, an attire that is not like any other attire this is a space where i want to do something unique my God, I said, this is, this is right here. This is a consecrated time before God. This is a consecrated space where God brings you into a holy place where, where he, where he himself examines where he wants you to be, where God himself examines what he wants to happen. And he talks to you about where you are and where you're supposed to be. This is a time where God intimately gets in your ear. People of God, you better pay attention. And as we are gathered together, this is a holy assembly that all of heaven is going to, uh, to pay attention. All of heaven, when you go on this fast right here, all of heaven, my God, is invited to your assembly. It's not just about you. It's not just about you. It's not just about you turning your plate down. It's not just about you. This is about what heaven got to say. This is about 
about the witnesses gathering around your life. My God, I sense the presence of the Holy Ghost. This is about all of heaven coming to witness. Say, God, you called this one. And there is, a, there is an anointing. There is a grace. And, I, and there is something that God wants to cut away. And there is something that he wants to talk to you about. There is a, a disposition that he wants to talk to you about. There is a cleansing that he wants to talk to you about. There is a crying out that he wants to take place. There is a marriage that he wants you to take place. There is a specified grace, a power, and an anointing that God wants to take place during this time of prayer. Oh, ba da 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 ba she. So this is a sterilization process. Y'all with me? This is a sterilization process. This is not about you uh, uh, being in a place to where you just moaning because you're not eating. Mm. This is a consecrated time where you say to God, I care about what you said about my life. This is a time where you say, God, I care, I care, I care. I care more than anything in the world. More than anything I've experienced, I care about what you said about my life. I care, I care, I care, I care. My God, that ought to make you want to weep right there. That ought to make you want to weep right there. That ought to make you want to weep right there. God, you have something so significant in my life, and I've just been among anything and anybody and carrying on. But God, I care about what you say about my, that ought to make you want to cry right there. That ought to make you want to sit in the living room floor right now and put your head face down in the carpet right there. God, I care about what you said, about what you, uh, 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 what you call me to. God, I care. I care about being in alignment. I care about the promises my God. And so let's let me move forward. Let me move forward. So, so 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 thirdly, I want to say to you that fasting is an opportunity to elevate your faith. God, I care. God, I care. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. And so fasting thirdly. Is an opportunity to elevate your faith. I want you to write down Romans 14 and 23. 14 and 23 of Romans. Praise your name, Jesus. Romans 14 and 23 says, For whatever is not faith is sin. Whatever is not faith, it is sin. You praying without faith, so you in sin. You woke up this morning and you can't even believe God. You doubt God. You doubt what he's saying. I'm not talking about stuff. I'm talking about what he's saying about you. Mm -hmm. He said, you are my beloved. He said, you're, you're the apple of my eye. And you have a place in you where you doubt being in fellowship with the Lord. Remember, 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 remember. That this is about your fellowship with God. It's about your relationship with God. My God. Remember, fasting is an opportunity to elevate your faith. According to Romans 14 and 23, in this time, you got you to gotta elevate your faith. And you go in this examination room, where is your faith? Where is your faith? Where is your faith? In your obeying the Lord. And all that he's called you to do, where is your faith? What is your posture with God? Praise the Lord. Evidence to, to you. Uh, uh, I had a conversation with a, a, a friend of mine about relationship. Practical. On here, we're going to be practical. We're going to get empowered. But we're going to be practical. Listen to me. I said to you on Thursday that no matter whatever it is, I don't care who, who's live you join. I don't care whose prayer assembly that you join. I don't care or uh, uh, what church you go to. You listen to me. Hear me good. The Bible says that Jesus asked Peter, he said, do you love me? No matter how many services you attend, 
no matter how live, many live broadcasts you attend, no matter how many scriptures you read, the bottom line of all of this is Jesus asked the question. He said, do you love me? And God's love language is, is, is your response. The, the, his love language is, is he's looking for a response in what you do. And so he said, Peter, you love me? And Peter said, yes, Lord, you know I love you. He said, well, what I want to see you do is feed my sheep. You saying it, but what I want to see you, there is something that you do in your life that lets God know if you really love him. I'm going to bless my own self tonight. Where's the cash at? Bam, there it is. Listen, listen. No matter what it is you do at the end of the day, God want to know if you love him. And so the evidence of, of me loving God the evidence of me loving uh, um, a person that I'm in relationship with is my vulnerability. It's not a curse word. Is my vulnerability. So when you love God, that means that means that means that means uh, you you are you are able to give God your physical body in this fast. When you love God, you, 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 you want to give yourself over to him emotionally and mentally. Listen to me, practical, practical. So as you're fasting and the flesh is, 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 is being crucified and is being mortified and you are uncomfortable and so as you live your life, the Bible says we are to live our lives. Come on, Romans 12. We are to live our lives as, as, as living sacrifices, living sacrifices, living sacrifices. That mean, that mean I am to constantly be offering unto Lord, to the Lord, something that, 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 um, mortifies my flesh, crucifies my flesh, and calls the spirit life that I have in Christ to thrive. You listening? You listening? So Jesus was saying, Peter, whatever it is you got to do to show me you love me. If you have to, if you have to turn the television off to feed my sheep, then that's what you do. If you're going to live, uh, you love me, if you're going to live a single life pleasing to me, then yes, living a God-filled life and living a life that's not only uh, uh, sexually pure, um, morally pure, but you're going to have to live that life pleasing to him, being obedient to his word. And you got to bring this physical body to him saying, it is such a challenge for me to live a life free from sex. It is such a challenge in life for me. Boy, for me not to eat right now, Lord God, it's killing me. But I trust you. I bring my body to you. Whatever discomfort that is in my body, the reward of discomfort, this discomfort is worth it. I trust you. You got to bring yourself. That's what fasting is. You got to bring yourself to God saying, I have to work at casting down imaginations. It's hard for me to stay out of the television, but this, this work for me to stay out of the television, Lord, you are work it. Share, worth it. Share with your friends, share with your relatives, share with anybody right through here. Listen, listen, listen. This work to keep my mind stayed on your word is worth it. Practical. That's what it looks like, right? Right? So when you're in relationship, with someone and you're giving them your time, that means they're not just in your company. That means they're experiencing all of you. Listen, listen, pay attention. 
So for you to come to a place in this fast and you're saying, God, I'm being trusting, I'm being vulnerable, I'm being open, I'm going to be honest with you, really what's going on with me. Remember, David said 26 and 2 of Psalm, he said, examine my heart. The, the, examine my heart. Examine my heart. And, and then Joel talks about this solemn place. He's just not inviting you to this place for because he want to have a card game with you. He, he, he's inviting you to this place because there is a level of consecration, sanctification, and there is a, a there is an assignment and an endowment of power. There is an endowment of power that you need to operate in in this earth realm in your new season. I hope you're listening. I hope you're listening. And so to God, what it means is when you're, you have yourself, your heart in this surgery place, you're entering into to this place saying, Lord, I trust you. I trust that you will protect me during this fast. I trust that you will speak to me during this fast. I trust, Lord, that you are going to strengthen me during this fast. I thank you. Lord, that as you read Isaiah 58, the Bible says, after you would have fasted, the Bible talks about God coming into your life, being your rear reward. The Bible talks about how he is going to restore you. Whatever that went uh, deficient in your time of fasting, you got to trust God that you are not going to die. By shame. You got to get to this place and this solemn assembly that God has not called you in the wilderness to kill you. You got to trust God and come to this place that the Lord is definitely going to give you answers. That he is definitely going to strengthen you. Now can you hear Proverbs 3, ministering to you, saying, trust in the Lord with all thy heart, with all thy, uh, uh, lean not to your own understanding, but in all of your ways, acknowledge the Lord, acknowledge the Lord, and all your ways, acknowledge the Lord, and he will direct your path. Now, can you hear Proverbs 3, ministering to you? If you trust the Lord, if you show, if you are, if you if you trust God, this is what you exhibit to him. I don't know where I'm going, but I trust that you are going to order my footsteps. I know that at the end of these seven days, I would be closer to you. At the end of this seven days of prayer, that you are going to strategically place me in a position that is going to call this propeller a movement in my life and in my spirit. You, I am going to be sharper and clearer uh, about the next thing that you desire in my life. And when you pray and when you come to this place of fasting, your life says this about you when you embark in this time of fasting. Romans 8 37 through 39, this is what you're saying to God. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded. When you enter into a time of of fasting, praying, you're saying to God, I'm persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor present things, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate me from the love of God, which is in Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Ooh, I could run through the house right there. When you embark in this place of fasting, the word fasting for the rest of your life should not be a time where you feel like running away from God. Hmm? It should be a time where you're saying any pain that I feel in my body is worth it for what I'm about to receive. Any, 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 any 
discomfort that I feel, thank you. That discomfort now becomes your helmet. Woo, shitiki be unsa. What do you mean, Davis? What I mean is when, when, when your body starts talking to you, telling you how uncomfortable it is, the helmet that is on your head is it, supposed to say to you, uh, um, I cast down every thought and every imagination, every high thing that exalt itself against the knowledge of God. You, 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 you'll get to this place to where you understand that my thought process is sanctified and consecrated before the Lord before the Lord. As we wrap up, I want to give you these keys. I want to give you these keys that while you are fasting, here are some focal points and objectives that while you fasting to experience all that we talked about, you got to spend time with God. Fast is not a fast unless you spend time with the Lord. A fast is not a fast unless you spend time with the Lord. With the purpose of deepening your relationship. With the purpose. With the purpose of deepening your relationship. With the purpose of deepening your relationship. Um, with the purpose of eliminating distractions. Right? With the purpose of, of being disconnected from ungodly character. I speak to you in my book about attention deficit. Some people um, have attention deficit disorder because there is a natural chemical imbalance in their lives and so they struggle to pay attention because of something medically happening to them. For those who don't have that distinct diagnosis and you are lazy in your mindset and you lack discipline to hold scriptures in your thought, you lack the discipline to concentrate and to focus on God in your time of prayer, this is the distinct and um, this is the perfect opportunity for you to bring yourself to God and work on that. You bring yourself to God and your timer whether you either read uh, 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 10 minutes straight of, of, of some Psalms, I said to you I will have some resources available on my website um, during the time, some scriptures that you could uh, focus on during your time of consecration. But that's what fasting is supposed to do. It is supposed to, uh, it is supposed to allow you to build areas of deficit in your life. Um, um, times of fasting is a focal point for you to understand that this is a time of breakthrough. You got to trust God for miracles. You got to trust God for miracles, um, through tough times and tough situations where there's blockages, where there's hindrances, where you have inabilities. Listen to me. I know what I'm talking about when I say to you, um, this is the time for you to fast about your inabilities and any deficits. So for those of you who you got, you're saying that it's hard. Uh, you're in a job that's hard. You're in, in a school that's hard. You're in a class that's hard. You, you find it hard to sit down and focus on getting any task done. Listen to me. God can do it. The Bible says in Philippians 4 and 13, that I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. This is the last time where you say to yourself, I can't, I won't, and I don't. Whatever it is you say it about, you can't eat well, you don't do that, that's just not how you roll, and it's an ungodly characteristic, it's time for that to die. It's time for that to die. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, 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 so during this time uh, of fasting, your focal and your objective is to be, um, um, you know, breakthrough, freedom, liberty, um, ridding yourselves of any block, praying about any blockages, trusting God that he's going to 
remove any blockages or hindrances in your life. This is to, this is the time for you to talk to God about areas where you know um, uh, that you require work. Um, you've been impatient. You've been popping off real quick. Uh, you've been stubborn in some areas. You've been you've been slow to obey God. You know, this is a time where you just can't come and just brush off the things that you've been struggling with. Um, because if not, if if you don't address it in that in these times of examination and consecration with God, you will be too distracted to adhere to future instructions that God want to give you. God want to give you. I believe that I got some deliverance and some breakthroughs in my life through people God sent to give me certain instructions. Now I could have, um, now this is where prophecy comes in handy. Um, when I say handy, I don't mean it like a, a, a tool, so to speak. I mean it like a focal point, like prophecy comes in for you to use as a focal point in your prayer time. So if you receive prophecy on certain, on business, on marriage, on any of those things, then that's the time for you to enter in prayer with that focus. If you're saying that you don't know what to pray for, go through your journal and look at some of the things, last things that the Lord say to you, say to you, or come to prayer with an empty journal and see what what the Lord allows to bubble up in your spirit or some things he wants you to recognize in your time of prayer. I trust that the Lord will bring all of these things to your attention. I wanted to allow a few moments that as we get ready to prepare for October 25th through the 31st, I wanted to give you an opportunity that if there are any questions are there any more questions on tonight's teaching, on last week's teaching? My God, bo 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 shata la ba kasa, woo woo yandi o shiki. My God, I know that there is a delay. I know there is a delay between me speaking and you typing, but in these moments before we make our transition, I want to know. Are there any questions, anything that you are not clear about? Anything that you are not clear about? Thank you for the hearts. Are, is there anything that you are not clear about? Or if you're excited, let me know you're excited. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. We invite you into this atmosphere, O oh Lord into this time of prayer and consecration. Thank you for the time of preparation, O oh Lord. Thank you for dealing with us even now before the consecration comes. Thank you for dealing with us even now. Hallelujah. No questions? Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, thank you. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Begin to fill up the bellies of your people. Me too. I'm excited too, Lady James. Begin to fill up the bellies of your people. Hallelujah. Begin to fill up the bellies of your people. Begin, Father, in the name of Jesus to fill up the bellies of your people. In every place that you have been, uh, uh, um, um, that you have been blocked in, praise God. I'm praying that as you prepare, as you prepare, I want you to go ahead and make sure you have a journal. I want you to make sure that you have a Bible. I want you to uh, make sure, glory to God, that you are uh, uh, plugged in um, to everything that God wants you to have. I want you to make sure that you are checking the website. Um, check, Make sure that you are subscribed so that whenever the announcement goes out and whatever the post goes up, um, that you'll be able to receive the notification um, and that you can go and make sure um, that you have everything, everything, everything 
um, that you know that need to have a successful time of fasting. If you are in this on this broadcast and you have been sensing that it is time for you to uh, consecrate yourself to the Lord, why don't you send me a confirmation because I'm excited for you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. If you say, I, I haven't sensed the confirmation, uh, but my heart is open and I'm really willing and I'm ready to, uh, to embark on this journey. Hallelujah. If you're saying to me um, that, 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 yes, this is my set time um, to seek the Lord for some specific things. And I, I sense the Lord tapping me on my shoulder. I feel the Lord thumping me in my spirit to come. Hallelujah. She said, um, I am in transition, so I'm challenged. Amen. Sister, Sister Patrick, does that mean that you're, this is a good time for you? Um, because every time is not, is not it. And I know a lot of us, it's time for us. It's time. Fast time. Um, glory to God. But it is a time for you to fast. If you're in a place where you are challenged, yes, definitely a time for consecration. Definitely a time of severe intercession to, to severe intercession. Now, I want to talk to you about this is severe intercession. Um, this is a time when we are, we're praying, um, since, since our substance is not food and our substance is, doesn't come primarily by getting entertained by the television or the internet, the internet, what will happen to you is, is that this time of, of consecration, you are going to go into a deeper well of inter session. And what that means is there is a groaning and there is a howling and that there is a, uh, uh, travailing that is about to take place for those of us who are intercess intercessors. And as intercessor, when you're in a place of, of fasting, it's not just about you, um, uh, just only about what God wants for you, but it's about what God wants to do in the body of Christ and the kingdom of God. It's about, um, you getting prepared to, um, continue, uh, to serve the Lord and you covering people, uh, your families, your relationships, um, and the thing, the resources that, that are within the kingdom of God. So breakthroughs for other people that you want to see. Um, 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 blinded eyes. I'm talking about people who are not walking with God, um, desire to know the Lord. These deep realms of intercession bring you to a place to where you just cry on behalf of people who are lost, that these deep realms of intercession, um, that when we closer you get to God, you become more compassionate to pray for, for those things that are on the, on the heart of God, you begin to pray and you begin to mourn the things that are on God's heart. You'll find yourself in a place to where things that you were griping about, they will not be that important anymore because you are in a space where God is empowering you above the realm of natural concern. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So get ready for that. Get ready um, um, for your, you know, it, you know, your anointing oil. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. So if there's anything that you want to take in prayer with you, your prayer shawl, um, photos of your family members, um, plans for your business. Hallelujah. If there's some designated things that God has called you to pray for, take that into prayer with you. Amen. In Jesus' holy name. Father, I thank you right now, Lord God, for those things that are hard. Um, um, things that have been hard for Sister Melanie. I thank you right now in the name of Jesus for calling her to a higher place, a deeper depth. Father, we just post her up to you in Jesus' name. And we just thank you right now for breathing the breath of life over her. And I just thank you right now in the name of Jesus that this hard place right now, this hard place is going to become a place of power, a place of empowerment, a place of breakthrough, a place of testimony in the name of Jesus. 
Whatever makes you cry right now is going to make you laugh. It is going to give you joy. It is going to give you victory. It is going to bring you into abundance because your God is a faithful God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I, I, I love to get to the place in the book of Joel where, where God begins to say to his people in Joel number two, in Joel number two, verses 18, Sister Melanie, this is for you. Then the Lord will pity his people and jealousy guard the honor in his land. And the Lord will reply, look, I am sending grain and wine and olive oil enough to satisfy your needs. You will no longer be an object of mockery among the surrounding nations. I will drive out the armies from the north and I will send them into a parched wasteland. And those in front will be driven into the Dead Sea and those that are in the rear into the Mediterranean and the stench of their rotting bodies will rise over the land. Surely the Lord has done great things. Do not be afraid, my people. Be glad now and rejoice for the Lord has done great things. Hallelujah. If I were you on tonight, I would grab a hold to what God is saying in his word. That's Joel 2, 18 through 21. So you are not just going on this. If you just go and howl and cry out to God about how hard it is, that's a good place for you to stand up on the word of God. Hallelujah. That God is going to uh, uh, give you. He said, I'm sending you grain and new wine and olive oil. And he said, it's enough to satisfy your needs. Praise God. And he said, I'll drive out the armies. Uh, uh, your armies, I'll drive away these armies from the north. So listen, God is in the process of driving out all those things that are call, causing it to be hard, blockages, hindrances, praise the Lord, to get you to a place to where you see victory. Praise God. To where you see the hand of the Lord scatter your enemies. This is the set time. Be encouraged. Praise God in the name of Jesus. Don't back down from this time. Don't back down from this time. We got you covered, Sister Melanie. We, dec we decree and declare that you will stand up as a soldier of the Lord and be strengthened during this time. Is there anything else? Is there any other questions? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. About the fast or regarding um, Thursday night's lesson or tonight's lesson. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Looking forward to this time. Hallelujah. Thank you for encouraging um, the woman of God, Pam James. God bless you. That's right. This is the time for us to rally around each other um, and to encourage each other. If you've ever been in a fault, in a fight, if you've ever been in a hard place, if you've ever been in a place, hallelujah, the Bible says we are born for such a time as this. Glory to God, um, that, 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 that a friend loves at all times and a brother is born for your adversity in the name of Jesus to lift up the arms of other people and undergird them in prayer. Thank you, Pam James, for rallying around um, um, uh, Melanie Patrick in prayer. Is there anything else? Hallelujah. No other questions? These are people, Lord God, we apply the blood of Jesus over their lives as they go into this week. Thank you right now that you are going to speak to them. Thank you right now that you are setting them up for a wealthy place. Thank you, Lord God, for this time, Lord God, of aligning our hearts with your will and bringing us deeper and deeper into your plan for our lives. We trust you. We appreciate you. And we honor you tonight for this time of fellowship with your word and getting in an expectation uh, for, for what you'll do in our time of prayer and fasting. In Jesus' holy name. I love y'all. If you want to sow to the ministry, you can sow at natashadavis.org securely, or you could go to my cash app um, and sow at hashtag Natasha N. Davis. Praise the name of the living God. We love you tonight, Jesus. We praise you tonight, Jesus.
Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of our God. Y'all hanging in here with me. Was there any other questions? Thank you, Jesus. Wonderful, great, marvelous. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. All right. Hallelujah. And then I will trust that God is already at work in the hearts of your, in the hearts of his people through this message. I love y'all. Be blessed tonight and have a marvelous and victorious week in Jesus name. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise you, Jesus.